we're going to be looking at the magnetic force on a current carrying conductor. So let's consider a long straight wire which has a current which is going out of the plane of the screen. This current carrying conductor is perpendicular to an external magnetic field given by the north and south poles of the magnet. First we'll determine the magnetic field pattern for our current carrying conductor and we use the right hand grip rule. So we take the thumb of our right hand and point it coming out of the screen. And you'll see that your fingers, which are representing the magnetic field lines, are pointing in an anti clockwise direction. We also have a uniform external magnetic field between the poles of the magnet and being directed from the north pole to the south pole. To determine the resultant magnetic field, if we look at the bottom of the current current conductor, you can see that the field lines are going in the same direction towards the right. So these field lines will be adding together. If we consider the magnetic field lines above the conductor, you can see that they are in opposite directions. The magnetic field lines due to the current carrying conductor is going towards the left. And the magnetic field lines due to the external field is going to the right and so these field lines will partially cancel out. So the resultant magnetic field looks like this. Below the current carrying conductor you can see we have a greater concentration of field lines so the magnetic field is stronger. And above the current carrying conductor, you can see the concentration of field lines is less, so the field is weaker. As the magnetic field is stronger below the current carrying conductor, you then get a net upward magnetic force acting on the conductor. If you have a current carrying conductor, so the conductor is of length L, and it has current I through it, and it's placed at right angles to a magnetic field of flux density B, then the magnetic force acting on our current carrying conductor is given by this equation here. So that magnetic force will equal Bill. It's important to note that the length L of the conductor is only the length that is inside the magnetic field. From this equation, we can get the definition of magnetic flux density. So if we rearrange the equation to make B the subject, B will then equal the force divided by the current divided by the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. The definition of magnetic flux density is, it is the magnetic force exerted per unit length of conductor, carrying per unit current, and with the conductor at right angles to the magnetic field. The units of magnetic flux density is the Tesla, given by capital T. And the definition of the Tesla comes from the definition of magnetic flux density. So the units of magnetic flux density will equal the units of force, which is newtons, divided by the units of current, which is an ampere, and divided by the units of length, which is a meter. So one tesla equals one newton per ampere per meter. So one tesla is defined as the magnetic flux density 
when you have a magnetic force of one newton acting on per meter length of conductor carrying per ampere of current with the conductor at right angles to the magnetic field. If the current carrying conductor is at an angle theta relative to the magnetic field, in order to find the magnetic force on the conductor, then we will only need to deal with the component of current that is perpendicular to the field. So we're going to find the component along the dashed blue line. The perpendicular component of current is opposite to angle theta. And current I is along the length of the conductor. And that length is representing the hypotenuse. So we have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So we use the sine term. So the perpendicular component of current is given by I sine theta. So the magnetic force acting on this current carrying conductor is given by this equation. So it's our magnetic flux density times by our perpendicular component of current, which is I sine theta. And that's multiplied by the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. To determine the direction of the magnetic force acting on a current carrying conductor placed at right angles to a magnetic field, we use Fleming's left hand rule. So we use the thumb and the first two fingers of our left hand, and the thumb represents the magnetic force. Acting on the conductor, our first finger represents the direction of the magnetic field, our flux density, B. And our second finger represents the current through the conductor, and this is the direction of conventional current. It's very important that you keep your thumb and the first two fingers at right angles to each other. And you always keep the relative positions of these digits the same. So if we look at the diagram, you can see your thumb pointing upwards. The first finger of your left hand is pointing to the right. And so the second finger of your left hand is pointing in a direction out of the plane of the screen. A good way of remembering which term belongs to which digit of your left hand is to remember FBI. So your hand is like a gun. And so your thumb is the F, the force. Your first finger is B, the magnetic flux density. And your second finger is the current I. So you're working for the FBI. We're now going to apply Fleming's left hand rule to the case we looked at at the beginning of the presentation, where we had a current carrying conductor with the current being directed out of the plane of the screen. And this conductor is at right angles to the external magnetic field due to the north and south poles of the magnet. If we take our left hand and we point our first finger in the direction of the magnetic flux density, which in this case is going from north to south. So we take our first finger and point it to the right. We then take our second finger and point it in the direction of the current. So as our current is going out of the plane of the screen, we need to point our finger away from the plane of the screen. And so if you've kept the relative positions of your thumb and first two fingers the same, you'll see that your thumb is pointing upwards. So the magnetic force on that conductor is upwards, as we proved earlier. Can you determine the direction of the magnetic force acting on the two current carrying conductors shown below? 
Well, for the first case, if we take the first finger of our left hand and point it in the direction of the magnetic flux density, so that's from north to south. So we point that finger to the right. We then take the second finger of our left hand and point it in the direction of the current. So that is towards the direction of into the plane of the screen. And so you'll see if you kept the orientation of your thumb and fingers the same, that the thumb is pointing vertically downwards. And so the magnetic force on that conductor is vertically downwards. If we now consider the second case, we take the first finger of our left hand and point it in the direction of the magnetic flux density, and that is from north to south. So our first finger will be directed vertically downwards. If we take the second finger of our left hand and point it in the direction of our current, so that means it will be pointing to the right. If you kept the relative positions of your thumb and the first two fingers the same, you'll see your thumb pointing to the direction into the plane of the screen. So this is telling us then that the magnetic force acting on that current carrying conductor is into the plane of the screen.